Rub up your engines! Money Pit 1946 says my wiper blades are newish, but they drive me nuts with noise. How do I stop it? Watch my videos. I show you how. It's not just the wipers. The wipers have to be cleaned, but so does your windshield. And I have only found this out myself a few years ago. My wife's Lexus. Creak, 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 creak. I put on brand new, the most expensive wipers you can buy. Even silicone wiper blades that last a long time. They kept making the noise a few weeks later. They said, "Hey, Scotty, try this. New finish is a polish. People don't think it's a car wax. It looks like a car wax, but it's actually a car." polish. It's called New Finish. N-U-F-I-N-S-H. H. New Finish. Orange can, orange bottle. You polish the windshield with it and then they don't squeak. My wife's Lexus hasn't squeaked for the three years since I've been doing it. I only polish it maybe once or twice a year. Gets the windshield so clean, polish it, that it's smooth and it stops making a noise. Try it and you'll thank Scotty for no longer having any noisy blades. And every once in a while you want to clean your blades, lubricate them a little bit, any kind of good rubber cleaner. A lot of guys will use isopropyl alcohol, 50% 50% water and it'll take all the crud off of them. But in your case, you got newish wiper blades. You got to polish the windshield too. And if you want, you can actually polish those rubber blades with the new finish too. That works quite well too and makes them cleaner and shinier. And then they work better. Here's some crazy car news. Check this thing out. Toyota says in 2022, they're going to make an electric tiny car, even smaller than the smart car. It's going to be called the C plus pod. It's an ultra compact battery electric car. We're talking about compact here for city driving only because the smart car had 61 horsepower in its electric version. The Toyota only has 12 horsepower. So we're talking about a tiny little vehicle for driving around in cities and they're going to sell it in fleets to begin with. So I mean it would make sense. It was something like meter maids in Japan are driving around. They're not going fast. They're just parking and giving out tickets. Something like that. You could get away with something like that. But it is a rear wheel drive coupe. It's for the drivers. <laughs> it's rear wheel drive. Of course most drivers want more than 14 horsepower. <laughs> but on the other hand, Toyota seems to be using their brains like I suggested. You got to make electric cars start small and make them bigger. Don't start big and make them small. That's the wrong way to do it. So they're going to start with tiny ones that work their way up. Really not that bad of an idea when you think about it. There's a big niche for tiny little cars, especially in Asia, where they're not going to be driving them that far or driving them that fast. You've seen the traffic jams there in the cities. You can't move anyway, so why not have a little electric car? Check out the C Plus Pod 2022 coming to a fleet near you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have anything about when they're selling to individuals yet. AL6 Beat says I got 2017 Honda Accord V6 Automatic, 37,000 miles. When the engine warms up, there's a ticking sound. I shut it off and start it up after about 30 seconds. The minute it returns, you want to see what the ticking is. You want to just get rid of any possibility. Like take the fan belts off in your driveway. If it goes away, it's something the fan belt drops. Could be an alternator. Could be a fan belt had a little rip in it and starts making noise. When they're older with more mileage, a lot. A lot of times it's the valves being out of adjustment. 37,000 miles, generally a Honda doesn't make valve noise, but they can. So when it's ticking, bring it to a mechanic. Let him listen with his listening device. And if he says, oh, well, you need your valves adjusted, get them adjusted. Because Hondas aren't like the rest of the cars out there. Most of them are automatic adjusted, glifters. Those you actually have to adjust. And a lot of guys don't. And then they make ticking sounds. So you might check that too. BR88 says, I got a Nissan Murano 06 CVT tranny with 161,000 miles. When I turn on my car, there's three beeping sounds, but no maintenance light comes on. When I drive, it still makes a beeping sound. It's a warning system. From what you explain, it sounds like like it has to do with your key system. You put your key in and off and beep, but it keeps beeping because it's not recognizing the key for some reason. I fixed some of those. Replacing the key fixed it. Say you have a keyless ignition system. That means that your key transponder has probably got a weak battery. You can replace the battery in that. If you don't have a key, replace the battery in that. And if it still beeps, you're probably going to need a new transponder. Uh, that's often the sound that you're going to get when those transponder systems start to go down. Always start simple and work your way up. Now let's say it works perfectly fine. Only you want to do is get rid of the noise, not spend any money. Follow your ear to the beeping sound. There'll be a beeping relay somewhere. Beeping, you can just unplug it. I've done that for many people. And if it stops beeping, it works fine. It's the fastest, easiest way of stopping the beeping. Jay says, what were some good GM cars back when they made them decent? Any old cars in the 90s and early 2000s? Well, I wouldn't even say cars. I'd say trucks. They made very good trucks. The 1500, the Silverados were excellent trucks. I got a customer with a 2000. He loves it. 
it. He's got 300 something thousand miles on it. I've had people buy used ones from the 90s that were still in decent shape. That was before they started making them really cheaply. The later model ones, if you go up, they're still okay. If you go to, you know, their actual commercial duty 2500s and up, they still are decent because they still have Allison transmissions. If you look at brand new heavy duty GM, GMC trucks, most of them have Allison transmissions and the transmissions you have almost a dozen choices of different ones you can put in them. I mean, they are decent built. Regular 1500s, modern ones, no. But those, they were good. The cars, they really started going downhill in the 90s, all of them. Chase Boy 4 says, Hey, Scotty, I got a 2001 Honda Civic. Once every two weeks in the morning, I go, I notice a small spot of coolant on the ground. I look, and it's under where the bumper is located. I'm not sure if it's normal, but I see it. What could it be? Well, you're never supposed to see coolant. The first thing you want to do, do the obvious thing. Change your radiator cap. If your radiator cap is losing pressure, pressure, coolant will come out and it goes on the overflow and it'll come down on that side. I'm guessing that's what it is. Now you could also have, it's an old one, the radiator's plastic and the aluminum is the cooling rings all in the middle, all that giant guard that's all aluminum, but the top and the bottom is plastic and the plastic often will seep water as time goes on and then it will leak out there. Now if it is that, you can have your system pressure tested and you'll see the radiator leak. But of course, if the cap's bad, you take the cap off and then pressure test the radiator. The radiator shows no leakage, then I just replace the cap. It could be as simple as all you need is a radiator cap. But my bet's that the radiator itself probably is starting to go 20 years old. Plastic finally gets brittle and then it starts seeping out a little. There. Have it pressure tested first. That's the most common thing. It's Tomo says, I was wondering what the light bulb sizes are for the traction control button, the power mirror control button, and the steering wheel controls for 2017. Nissan Versa S Plus. There are no bulb size. They don't use bulbs. They use LEDs. If it's gone out, generally the LEDs don't burn out. You got an electrical short that's not sending power to them. Very rarely do LEDs go out on something that's that new 2017, even with Nissan. Everything these days is LEDs. They're cheaper to buy. They use less power, so they can use cheaper wiring to feed them. The whole thing has cheaper cost down the line. So odds are you don't have bad bulbs. You got a wiring problem or a computer module problem because generally any of those LEDs last forever. And almost all cars these days, stuff interior is all LEDs, light many dials. Like I said, it's cheaper to make them. They use less power, so the wiring that feeds them is cheaper. The computer circuits that run them need to use less power. They only use, you know, milliampers, thousands of an amp power to them. They're all LEDs, and odds are you don't have a bad bulb. You got some kind of wiring or module problem, or a ground circuit problem where they're not grounding them. Here's a blast from the past. 1975 MG Midget says, I have a 1975 MG Midget. It runs great but it has issue on cold and warm starts. It's a rough idle. Once you start driving, it idles well. It's an old midget. Those had one of the worst carburation systems ever made to man because it's a 75. Still got anti-pollution stuff on the stupid carburetor system. My advice, take that English carburetor out and throw it in a garbage can. Get yourself a Weber Italian carburetor conversion kit. We used to do that all the time. They run great with the Italian carburetors. The English carburetors are crap. A Weber carburetor and it can run perfectly fine. That English carburetors are junk. Now, if you don't want to spend that kind of money, you can take carburetor bark, try to rebuild it. But they're crap carburetors and those in 75 have all this anti-pollution equipment that can make the carburetor act up. I would just say, forget it put a Weber conversion carburetor on it. We used to do that all the time and the customer's like, wow, it really runs good now. I said, yeah, because we took all that crap off and put on a Weber Italian racing carburetor and it didn't cost back. Back in the day, we used to buy the kits for like 220, 220 bucks. They weren't all that expensive. Hey, Wiggins says, I got a 79 F250, 351 Cleveland, four wheel drive, 127,000 miles. When I crank it, it runs, but turn it off. Before you can crank it, it dies. I replaced the carburetor, fuel tank, plugs and wires, even the ignition coil and switch. Common thing of that is ignition systems just flat wear out. Now you've replaced the ignition coil and the switch on something that old. You can go to any auto parts store. I had one a couple months ago. I was shocked. The distributor went out and that's why it kept stalling out and they had it in stock at an auto zone. I didn't have to order the thing. It's a 79, right? So I would just say just go full and replace the ignition system, the distributor, the whole assembly, not piecemeal here or there. It may be an old. It's a 79, but it still has electronic ignition. It doesn't have points. It's electronic ignition. And those things do wear out over time. Just replace the whole thing and you get generally a lifetime warranty with good auto parts stores. So once you buy it, you'll have to buy another one. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.